Well, during the pandemic, the city of Denver closed several streets to vehicle traffic, making them pedestrian only. And the day after the big storm, there are a lot of folks who didn't want to walk up to the top of Ruby Hill to go sledding, so they drove instead. Denver 7's Lance Hernandez live at Ruby Hill Park, where the city is now dealing with quite a headache there, Lance. They really are, Shannon, and, and you know, some zealous letters uh, turned this stretch of grass into a roadway on Monday, the day after the big storm, leaving it a muddy mess. What they likely didn't realize is there's a lot of asbestos under Ruby Hill Park because it was built on a landfill. It's very sad. I, I, I try to empathize. I can't. I'm sorry. Um, park out there and walk in. The deputy executive director of Denver Parks and Recreation not happy with all the damage done to Ruby Hill Park. This is not acceptable. This is damaging all of it. They just damaged their own park. <laughs> Hundreds of people converged on the park after the big storm to take advantage of the snow covered hills. The park so packed there was nowhere to park. So a few people drove around barricades and up onto the grass to get to the top of the hill. No big deal, you say? This park is on a landfill, and there is asbestos underneath where we stand. There is so much asbestos under Ruby Hill Park that Denver Parks and Recreation has to get permission before it can even plant a tree. Gilmore estimates it could cost fifty dollars to $100,000 to mitigate the asbestos soil. Some of the soil is going to have to come out. We have to pay extra to just dispose of the soil and so we'll do the best we can and the park will you know we'll get it back that's what we do he's matter of fact about what needs to be done but not happy that money will have to be spent in this time of covid related budget and staff reductions and mr gilmore told me that it could be months before ruby hill park is back to normal lance hernandez denver seven thank you lance